Hi, thanks for joining us for worship. This is a new experience for us and uh, we hope it enables you to remain connected to God and to us as a community, uh, even if that is remotely at the moment. Um, as you'll appreciate, as the chaplaincy team, we've been responding to the ever-changing situation over recent days. Um, we will try and continue to do that and to let you know ways in which we can still be around to help and support anybody who might need it, uh, but also kind of different ways we might worship or pray, uh, again, maybe remotely or in our different locations. Um, if you've got ideas, um, then do let us know. Um, in a few moments, I'm going to read some words from Psalm 23, which is set for today. I'll be using the NRSV translation, so you might want to um, join in with me if you want to at home um, or find that on, online. Um, but before that, let's just still ourselves and remember that God is here wherever we are. Um, God is here in Keel Chapel. God is here in your homes. God is present in this world that God created. Let's just be still for a few moments. God's faithfulness. We share in those ancient words of God's people who remember that in joys and in sorrows God is present as we share in words from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you are a God who walks beside us, who goes before us, who is engaged in the world that you made and who loves us beyond our knowledge and comprehension, that you came and dwelt amongst us, and in Jesus lived our life yet without sin. We pray that in these times, we might continue to know you present. And as we pause in our different places at this time, we come to acknowledge you as God. We come to thank you, to praise and to worship you. To honour you in this moment. Gracious God, we thank you for your faithfulness and for your love made known in Jesus. We pray as we share in this short time together that we might be drawn closer to you, that we might offer you our worship, that we might hear your word to us. And we might be encouraged to continue to live as your people. For this we pray in your name and in the power of your spirit. Amen. Reading from Matthew 5, verses 1 to 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is God's holy word. Thanks be to God. As we start, let's pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts give glory to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So how are you doing at the moment? A bit scared? Yeah, me too. I never thought that the world we knew could change quite so radically in such a short space of time, that things we take for granted could be taken from us, that loo roll would become a treasured commodity. So many possible futures seem to lie in front of us and who knows which one's going to become our reality. I was getting gloomy the other night with my other half and I said, can we talk about something else for a while? But then we just kind of looked at each other because what else is there to talk about at the moment? That gig we've got tickets to? The holiday we were planning? The new film we were hoping to catch at the cinema? This virus seems to have brought with it a kind of lesser pandemic of disappointment and cancellations, holidays, weddings, family gatherings, brownies, book clubs, spin class, small losses and huge ones. And over all of them looming the fear of the biggest loss of all, the loss of someone that we love or even several someones. Grief is a normal response. Grieving for our former certainties, for the day-to-day -day mundanities that we took for granted. Our identities are so often tied up in the things that we do. How can I be a university chaplain while the university is closed? Who am I if I'm not that? Another chaplain friend of mine named Johnny was posting about that loss of identity on Facebook. And he went on to say, but Lent is a time of dying to self, of going deep into the heart of who we are, not just what we do, and stripping back the activities and practices that we think define us to discover what lies beneath. Allowing time and energy for that grief, that dying to self, as Johnny put it, is important. Don't be hard on yourself if everything takes longer at the moment even if the, the still normal bits of your routine seem harder than before. We're all grieving. Give it a bit of time. And if you're anything like me, you're also anxious. And the problem with anxiety is that it's all consuming, isn't it? It shuts out everything else except our feelings. And it lies because it tells us that our feelings are all there is. I was listening to a sermon this week about anxiety by a Lutheran pastor in the States called Reagan Humber, uh, and I've drawn on that a lot in what I'm saying today. Incidentally, we've put some worship and prayer resources on the chapel website, and there's a link to the sermons from Reagan's church, which are well worth a listen, although you will get to find out where I get all my ideas from. But anyway, Reagan was talking about anxiety and about how the pain of it is real, but still, there's more. There's more. There's more than our anxieties, however justified those anxieties might be right now. There's always more than what we feel and know in this given moment. There's always more because our God is always ahead of us, making room in our lives and in the world, doing a new thing and carrying us forward. There's always more than what's happening right now. The now is real. It's very real at the moment, but God is already making room for the not yet. 
That's what Jesus is doing in the Beatitudes. The passage that James read for us just now, Jesus is making room for more, more than grief, more than poverty, more than just what was happening in the lives of his hearers and is happening in our lives. The church has always tended to teach the Beatitudes as if they were sort of prescriptive, like kind of nine extra commandments, instructions on how to be blessed. Be meek and you'll inherit the earth. Be pure in heart and you'll see God. But listening to them again in the light of our current situation, we can hear Jesus both speaking to our anxiety and our pain, but also telling it to move over, move over, because there's more. I don't know about you, but frequently I wish that when it comes to painful stuff, Jesus would just fix it, make it go away. My experience is that usually he doesn't. Usually he comes alongside us, acknowledges what we're going through, but also says that the pain is just going to have to scooch over a bit because there's more. When Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, he's saying, blessed are the anxious, the depressed, the hopeless, because they're the ones my kingdom is for. And in my kingdom, there's apple crumble and friends who look out for you. Blessed are you who mourn, for there will be casseroles to soothe your soul. Blessed are the meek, because you make far more difference than you know when you pick up the phone and say, how are you doing? Blessed are you who cry when you're watching the news, because your tears reveal that love is as alive as ever. Blessed are the ones who hand over the last pack of pasta to someone who needs it more because you see Jesus in them. Blessed are the doctors and nurses, the orderlies and administrators. Blessed are the teachers and the carers and the supermarket workers, for they are and always have been children of God. Blessed are you whose anxiety fills your head because one day that fog will lift. And you'll see that there is more. There's always more. God is making room for more in your life and in mine. And our pain never has the last word. The world in the future is going to look different. Different priorities, different ways of working and being will solve some problems, will inherit new ones. Dreams will die and new dreams will be born. And all along, God will continue making room for there to be more and more and more. Which is why we gather together in worship, whether that's physically or virtually. We're here because we need more. We all desperately need there to be more than just what we feel and what we fear right now. When we find ourselves in isolation, sometimes our world shrinks down until we're left with only what we can see immediately for ourselves. But when we gather together in God's presence, we can hear God say, there's more. Because our God is bigger even than such a time as this. I don't know very much right now, but I do know this. That God is present in every act of love and generosity and kindness, that we make God present by such actions. I know that very clever people are looking for answers and deeply committed health workers are pouring their lives out. I know that the people who just a few weeks ago were unskilled workers are suddenly some of the most important people in our community. I know that accommodations like home working that would always have made life better for many people with disabilities or chronic illness will be the norm from now on. There's no going backwards. This is our new reality. We're going to have to adapt as human beings always have when the world changes. It's going to be hard for a while, maybe quite a long while. Give yourself space for grief. But there will be some good like the birds that are singing in Wuhan and the canals running clean in Venice. And it's okay to hold on to that, because that's real too. Back to my Facebook friend, Johnny, who ended his post with this. So as you adapt to the new normal, as your normal patterns are disrupted, as you take on new activities, make sure that you also allow for some dying to self, for the pain of beloved activities and roles to be taken from you, And make sure that you grieve, not only for your loved ones, but also for the ideas of yourself that will die during this pandemic. Slow down. Be kind to yourselves. Shop for your neighbours. Love deeply. Don't panic. Trust that life and light and love will find a way.
wash your hands. Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Amen. By way of introduction to the next part of our service, one of the many things that sadly has been cancelled in the coming weeks, we were supposed to have a service in the chapel of Thanksgiving for those who were given their bodies to the medical school for research purposes. And our own Naomi and Yasmin were due to perform forays. P.A. Yezu was part of that service. Sadly, that is not going to happen at the moment. So we asked them to come into the chapel and record it for us so that we could enjoy it together. and gracious God. We pray for the needs of our world at this challenging time. We pray for all those who are sick, especially those who are suffering with the coronavirus. May they find strength in your presence and experience a speedy recovery. We pray for those who have died or are near the end of their lives. May they find peace with you, and may those who mourn be comforted in your love. We pray for all those working in our health and social care services. We thank you for their courage and dedication. May their acts of service inspire us to live more generously.
we pray for those who are often overlooked in their services. Those who work to keep our shops open, deliver our parcels, clean our buildings and collect our waste. For those who care for elderly relatives in their homes or those who look after children. May this time of uncertainty help us to realise how interconnected we are and how much we rely on one another. We pray for those who are anxious and worried at this time. May we learn to more deeply trust you and place our concerns before you. We pray for those who have become isolated or lonely at this time. May we work together to strengthen our bonds of friendship and connection, especially when physical distance separates us. We pray for our chapel community, that our roots of faith and acts of service may deepen and grow at this time. We pray for the wider university, for those concerned about their studies and work. May we use well the technology at our disposal to find new ways to teach, learn, and continue the pursuit of truth in the company of friends. We pray for those whose situation is ignored by the world's media at this time, for refugees and displaced people, for those suffering from religious persecution, natural disaster, and the effects of man-made climate change. Give us a hunger for your kingdom so that we might bring about a fairer world today and in days to come. Hear the prayers of your faithful people, spoken and unspoken. Grant us your peace and compassion in all that we do. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of all, at this time of confusion and fear, where so many are separated from one another, may we not be separated from you but know you closer than our breathing. As we continue into this day and the days ahead, may we know the richness of your blessing. And may the blessing of God, who is ever creating, always redeeming and constantly sustaining, be with us all. Amen. May we live in the knowledge of God's love for us and all creation. And may we move forward with hope for all that is to come. May God bless you at this time and always. Amen. Thank you for sharing with us in worship. Look out for other opportunities to stay connected. God bless you. <laughs>